Hello and welcome to Gem Bear Designs. This is a watercolour tutorial aimed at people who are just starting out uh, playing around with watercolours. Um, and I do mean playing around, they're great fun to get into. This is what I'm going to be using today. It's a 5x7 watercolour pad. It isn't an expensive pad at all. Don't buy the really, really cheap watercolour paper you see in some discount stores because as soon as it gets wet, it starts to disintegrate. This one's fairly cheap and it holds its own with a little bit of water. I couldn't do too much with this pad, I couldn't keep scrubbing out. But for today's tutorial, it's perfectly all right and it's a good enough quality while you're learning on as well. And I sometimes have a go on this when I'm um, working on compositions as well. My paint palette I've had for many, many, many years. I just keep topping up the tubs as they empty with tube paint. I find it really easy to transport. That little palette's been all the way around the world with me. I take it everywhere, along with a couple of pencils. So, first thing I'm going to do is sketch out my blue tit. Very lightly, I'm just using an ordinary, everyday propelling pencil here. And if I make a mistake, it's very easy just to rub out. So I'll just whiz through the drawing. I'm just copying a photograph. I've got lots and lots of photographs of birds I've taken from the garden and some of the internet as well, just to get the finer detail that my camera doesn't pick up. Just doing a little blue tit sitting on a branch with watercolour. People, some people like to put in masses of detail and go really for the finest brushes or you might just prefer a much more loose style of painting. Today I'm going a little bit in between. There's some detail but it's not a truly loose painting. I've put some water on my paint palette now to start activating those paints. I've got a piece of scrap paper just so I can check the colour that I've got on my brush and also to make sure there's not too much water on my brush. There's nothing worse than going in with a dark colour and a huge blob appears that you weren't expecting because you can't get rid of that kind of dark colour in watercolour. So I'm just starting laying down some layers of pale colour to start with and then I can always add more to it. I haven't moistened the paper in this one, I'm just adding the paint to the dry paper. I'm using a very limited palette of colours. I've got lemon yellow, sage green, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue and a bit of black and I think that's your lot. Everything is mixable. Yeah, um, that lemon yellow with black will give you a lovely green. You can change the greens with adding more yellow to them and blues. And I'm just putting in <coughs> some ultramarine into that black to soften it a little bit. The purists will tell you to mix your own blacks, which you can do very easily using reds and greens. But as this is just a quick tutorial for the, to try and build some confidence up when you're painting, maybe to set out a composition. I really don't see the harm in using black. It's invented for a reason, so I may as well use it. So I've just gone round, I've started with my paler colours. When the paint is still wet, go in and add your shadows. What I have been doing is I draw the outline in the colour I want and then while the paint's still wet, go in with some water on my brush and soften any lines. Otherwise you will end up with a line that you can't actually physically get rid of and it's very frustrating that. So always keep the edge of the paper where the paint meets the paper wet and then you won't get any hard lines. If you need anything white in watercolour, leave it blank. Try not to paint over any area that you want to keep white, protect that paper. I messed around with the tail quite a bit, the tail feathers, trying to get them to look how I wanted them. And in the end I just left them as they were. With watercolour, you get to a point where you either have to throw it away and start again, or just accept it, otherwise you end up with a muddy, sludgy mess. So, I just thought I'm going to leave the tail alone, I've done as much as I can to it. And in the end, once it dries, it went a lot paler. And I was quite happy with the finished result. Hope the video is of benefit to you. If you've got any questions, please put them in the box. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye now.